If you want to study the French, you go to France. If you want to learn about the great redwoods, you head to California. So if you want to study how sharks move, why use artificial sharks in a lab? Why not go someplace like the shark-infested coast of South Africa? For NSF-funded researcher John Long, it's not because he's afraid of these spine-snapping beasts. No, John is a trained biologist and author of the book Darwin's Devices. He studies real live sharks to build computer models and autonomous robotic sharks. He uses these robots to study sharks' vertebrae and how they affect their movement. So in my laboratory, we've been able to measure very carefully the biomechanical properties of shark vertebral columns and then put those properties into biomimetic skeletons. A biomimetic skeleton is something that's completely artificial. But why use artificial sharks instead of the real ones he has in a lab in Florida? John likes building and working with robots because it offers him more control and a more concentrated view of what he's studying. One of the greatest things we can do is you can isolate one feature at a time. And so in our case, we want to understand vertebral columns and how vertebral columns function in living sharks. So in our robots, we can do things like vary the number of vertebrae. Vertebrae are the bones in your back. So we can vary that number, in essence, varying the size of the joints and vary the mechanical properties. We can do this in a way that you can't do in the living sharks. It's like wanting to study a car's transmission. Rather than watching other people drive, it makes sense to build your own transmission and look at it in a controlled environment. Using these artificial vertebral columns has yielded great results for John and his team. One of the things we found when we try to mimic sharks and put them into robots is that the vertebral column is a really important structure in the behavior of animals. The vertebral column is important in propulsion, it stores elastic energy, and it varies its stiffness as the structures that make up the vertebral column vary in their size. And John's team is now taking this knowledge about our toothy friends and applying it to problems that we land dwellers face. We have an understanding now of how to do something that's really tough in terms of engineering, which is how do you put soft, wet stuff together with hard stuff? And this is the problem of bones and joints. You know, joints are floppy, they're wet. Bones tend to be drier and stiff. And so we're figuring out how to do this kind of fabrication process. So designing these robot spines based on their powerful real-life cousins gives John Long a fin up on achieving some far-reaching impacts.